So Unity 2018.2 has introduced us to a bunch of new 2D features, which includes support for SVG files, which also stands for Scalable Vector Graphics and Pixel Perfect. I have been able to play around with these features a lot, and they're not that large features, so I thought I can actually make a video covering the basics of them for beginners and also intermediate developers in Unity. And I mean like both features in one video. So we're going to go slowly and be friendly towards beginners in Unity, and also for intermediate people obviously, so don't worry if you don't know a whole lot right now because you're not expected or assumed to know a lot right now watching this video. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this aimed for beginners mostly and also for intermediate people, make sure to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or any features you want me to cover next. And with that being said, let's begin. I Hey guys, Sam here, and like I said before, we are going to go through two of the brand new 2D features introduced to Unity, and we're just kind of going to focus on how you get started with them, and how to use them the correct way, instead of focusing on super in-depth stuff. I'll give a few examples, and that will get you started as a beginner, and as an intermediate Unity user too. So if you already have experience with Unity, you can still watch the video. Before we get into the topic itself, I just want to give my special thanks to Richard Stans, Cupola, Tromber MCP, and all of our other Patreons supporting the channel. You guys are awesome, and the rest of you, if you want to check out our Patreon page and how you can support the channel for more content, you can do so by clicking the link in the description down below. But now, let's get started. So first and foremost, let's get a basic step out of our way. These features are supported in Unity 2018.2 and later. That means that you have to download one of those versions of Unity first, and easiest way of doing that is by downloading Unity Hub, which is a new standalone app made by Unity to store all of your projects and Unity builds. You can download it through the link I'm going to leave in the description. Go ahead and click it. I'll just wait here with some awkward elevator music. I'll just wait for you. Alright, so from this point on, I will assume that you got the latest version of Unity installed. If not, pause the video, download Unity, and then resume from here. So let us now get started with the feature SVG support. SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics, are basically a vector image format which support interactivity and animation. This format recently got supported in Unity 2018.2 as a part of the 2D update and focus area, and now you can use them instead of just filling your project with a bunch of texture sprites. So in basic words, what does that really mean? Vector sprites work almost the same way as texture sprites, but they offer efficiency in terms of file size and performance. If we were to create a 2D game where we are using many different texture sprites for multiple characters and buildings and props in our game, we would potentially be using larger amounts of memory. For instance, if we were to create a 1080 pixels resolution circle to fill the game window, we would be using a texture up to 4 megabyte in size to make sure that it's not pixelated. However, with vector sprites, it would only cost us a few hundred bytes while we retain the exact same quality with no pixelation. Now, there is in fact an SVG importer in Unity, but we first and foremost have to import that into our project. So let's go ahead and enter the project manager in Unity, which you can do by going to Window, select Package Manager, and then click the Alt tab in here. And we can see that there is a package called Vector Graphics, so go ahead and click on it, and then click Install on the right-hand side. After Unity finishes importing this package, you can start importing SVG assets into your project just like you import any other asset. That means either by right-clicking in your Project tab, picking Import New Asset, or just dragging and dropping your SVG asset files into your project's assets folder. When you import the SVG file, Unity will automatically tessellate it and convert it into a sprite. Tessellate basically in this sense means that Unity processes the file to make sure that it's working well on any resolution and does not become pixelated when you zoom in on it. This is a huge deal and in my opinion the fundamental part of this feature. You don't get to see a bunch of cracks in the sprite when you zoom on it. 
And on top of that, even though the sprite is working just as well on any resolution and Unity takes care of that, the file itself also retains its small file size to even begin with, which is astonishing. And that is how you save a lot of space and also get better performance in your games. You can also edit the tessellation settings of each of these files by basically going to the folder you imported your SVG asset into, inside of Unity obviously, and click on the asset itself, then you will see a few settings open up in the inspector window. And here in the inspector you can pick what sort of tessellation settings you wish to use. There's there's one called basic which pretty much gives the SVG importer the authority to automatically configure the advanced settings to make sure your SVG asset tessellates at a high enough resolution. If you pick the basic option, you won't have to play with these settings necessarily, but you can also change the target resolution, which is the resolution of the devices you target your game to run on, such as if you're targeting like an iPhone platform, then you can grab the resolution of the screen sizes for iPhones and then support that. And you can also change the zoom factor for which the SVG asset should not look tessellated at. This should be set to 1 by default, and if you feel like it doesn't really work out for your game, or if that zoom factor is not working out for you in general, feel free to change it. But you can also check out their documentation, which I'm going to link in the description, which is a little more in-depth when it comes to these settings. On the other hand, if you pick advanced settings, then you get a set of new options unfolded in the inspector. You don't necessarily need to use all of them, but you can edit things like the step distance, which is practically how smooth your sprite's curves should be. A lower number of step distance results in a more dense tessellation, but it's also heavier on the editor. You can see step distance as the distance between two links in a chain. The shorter the links are, the more you can bend the chain smoothly, if the links are longer, it means there's a longer step distance and you cannot bend it as smoothly. It almost becomes like a little rectangular. You can also enter the sprite editor, by the way, through the inspector, which allows you to edit the sprite. And I also realized if you didn't understand my chain and link example that I just gave, let me know in the comments and I can actually give you a better example and demonstration of how that works. And now the next and final feature of our video for today is called Pixel Perfect. This is also an independent package we need to import into Unity through the Package Manager, so let's do it. Open up the Package Manager again through Window and then click on the All button again. In here, you can now pick 2D Pixel Perfect and do not do it as I did. I was searching for this far down in the list where everything with the first letter being P is because I was not expecting it to include a 2D at start. So go ahead and install this too and when Unity finishes importing the package, you have got Pixel Perfect installed. The Pixel Perfect feature will help you get perfect and crisp pixels regardless of the screen size by making all of the calculations automatically for you. And the best part of this is that your sprites will benefit from the feature even when they are in motion or rotating. That means when you move them, animate them and stuff like that, they will keep a sharp pixelation without you having to edit the sprites or any settings with your project. And honestly, applying this effect is literally the easiest thing in the world. You literally just go to your main camera in the scene and add a new component onto the camera, which is called Pixel Perfect Camera. And that is it. Uh, I guess I'll just see you guys later. Have a nice evening, night, wherever you are. No, seriously, that's literally it. Like, we obviously have some settings we can play around with, but it's, the whole package just consists out of this one single component you add to your camera, that's it. And if you wish to manipulate these settings a little bit, you have fields like the assets pixels per unit and reference resolution. The, just a quick overview of what they are actually, the reference resolution is supposed to be the resolution your sprites are meant to target. Meanwhile, the assets PPU or pixels per unit is the value you should match the PPU value in your scene. So depending on how many sprites you have, depending on how many pixels per unit you are using, you should just match that number pretty much. And obviously I do not expect you, myself, or anybody else watching this video really to be super confident working with asset pixels per unit and PPU and all that kind of stuff. So for that sake, I'm going to leave some links in the description to some very useful documentation you can check out to learn more about PPU and what it means, how you can calculate that and stuff like that. It's not, it's not rocket science, I just gotta say that, so don't be scared or intimidated 
of entering it. And if obviously, once again, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section and we are happy to help. And that is pretty much it for this video. Obviously, since this video is mainly targeting the new users and beginners to Unity and also at the same time, obviously, intermediate people and intermediate developers, I don't want to make it too long. I don't want to like bombard you guys with information, especially considering the fact that we are covering two different features in one video just because they're not way too large. Um, but if you obviously have any questions, once again, cannot get something to work or do not understand something specific, let us know in the comments. We're always helpful in the community, and that's one of the upsides of being a part of our community. You can also join our Discord server, by the way, which is also linked in the description to receive more live help instead of waiting for comments all day. Either way, I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to stay up to tune for new content, and give this video a thumbs up to show some support. All the likes are super appreciated and they make it super obvious for me to realize what kind of content you guys like to see. Now, with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comment section and in our Discord server. Have a good night. Peace out, guys. I